We also have, uh, that's it, that's it. And myself, my win for the week is that I've been uh, sh consistent with my speed reading. For you guys who do not know, I'm a very, uh, I'm dyslectic, uh, which means my reading is all over the place. I do, however, love to read. I love to read, it's really one of my passions. I love knowledge in general. And just to be able to dissect more information so I can teach it faster to you guys. One of my big wins is that I've been speed reading every day for the last, yeah, for the last week, for the whole week of December. It's my December challenge I'm running with myself. So round of applause for me, God damn it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, Vero is saying my win for the week is that I keep up with intermittent fasting. And just a quick round of applause for Vero also. And now we're going. So, today's topic is called the Christmas Table Temptations. And I just know myself from so many years of coaching, so many years of coaching different people, so many years of teaching some of the world's best dancers from Alemana, Karel Flores, uh, Antonio Biarda. We have. Uh, Korki Judith, Luis Andrea, Chavez and Silvia, pick a name, and I probably trained them. And I say this with all humbleness on the planet, because I, I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm joking with you. Uh, <laughs> with that being said, most people live very hectic lifestyles. Most of us are living very hectic lifestyles. Most of us are constantly traveling. Most of us have been some way or another placed in a situation where we are better now than we were before we came into this movement. And with that comes in a little bit of external pressure, or internal pressure more, I'd say. And what I mean with that is that you came this far, you made all this progress, you, you might be, be eating right, you, or you just started your training, so you got momentum. Now what's happening is that we're faced with holiday seasons. So now we no longer can control the meals we're eating almost. All of us, you know, we are in not forced, but it's almost mandatory to show up to, you know, having a couple of drinks with your friends. We have desserts from your grandma. We have all of these different things that we really cannot control. But at the same time, you are on this journey. So you don't want to get anxiety and pull yourself back. Lose all the momentum you've been building up so you got to start over one more time, right? Thumbs up if that is something you can relate to, something if you've been in this situation before or are you are currently in that situation. I know myself. And when one thing goes very good in my life, if I'm really consistent with my training, my, my meditation, a lot of good things are going to start happening also. My financials become better, my relationship becomes better, my happiness level becomes better. Because I always explain it as in like, if you want a good life, health, wealth, love and happiness, all those four circles intersect and in the middle you have the good life. So you see it almost like the flower of life symbol, like the seed of life symbol for you guys who know what that is. But if one starts to, if you start to slack a little bit in one, there a, there's a huge chance for you that if your health is starting to fall down, your relationship will start to fall down a little bit. And then your training will start to fall down a little bit. And then your love will start to fall down a little bit. So everything is just like, everything is intersecting. So for us to keep that all up, I'm gonna run over 10 quick strategies, 10 quick tips that some of them are very obvious, but the more we use them, they are going to be very powerful. All right? Sounds good? Perfect. First things first. Let me pull up my sheet sheet here so I don't miss any one of these. Boom. Bam. Can you... What does it say there? Can you recall those four circles, please? Yeah, so the, what, what I call the good life. It's health. Wealth, love, and happiness. So for example, if you have incredible wealth, but you are very low in your happiness level, then what do you really got? If you have 
crazy health. You, you gotta, you're a super performer, but you have no love. Like you don't have any love to your family, no relationships, then what do you really got? So in order for you to succeed, to truly succeed in life, in a holistic standpoint, all four pillars need to be at some, some type of similarity in the name of strength, right? So either way, first things first, first things first, do your training the day before and do your training the same day if you can. I don't know what traditions you have in your home, but do your HIIT training and do high intensity interval training. Do training or weightlifting, but I know that a lot of us are right now in a position where we can't do weight training because the gyms are shut down. But what I want you to do is to really keep going with your normal life, your new standard. Keep that as far as you can into the holiday seasons. All right, do HIIT training. We have tons of different HIIT workouts inside of Dancers Bootcamp. If you need more, if you don't get access to Dancers Bootcamp, let us know and we will set that up for you, all right? So that's the first thing. Second thing, skip breakfast. On Christmas, it's a thousand percent chance that I'm not eating breakfast. Because <laughs> if you skip the meal here, so think, like, think about calories. It's just, it's just a numbers game, essentially, if you keep a healthy relationship to it. So everybody knows what calories is, right? We got some new people, but I want everybody to truly understand this. Calories is the sum of what we count food, right? Well, everything you put inside of your body contains calories, except water, because it's not a xenobiotic. But if you don't eat your breakfast, and let's say you have, let's say you're supposed to eat 2,000 calories during the day, and your breakfast contains 500 calories, but you know that when you come to grandma's place, it's for sure you're gonna have <laughs> all the sweets, you're gonna have some cookies, you're gonna enjoy yourself at grandma. So instead of eating all of those cookies there, you, you take those calories and just place them over here instead. And the same thing goes with, if you are, so we celebrate Christmas 24th. So let's say you celebrate Christmas 24th with your family, then on the 26th, you are supposed to do some other type of celebration with friends. So you know there's going to be some drinks, some sweets, all of that. And you want to be part of it, right? Because it's the holidays. So then you fast, on, you skip breakfast on 24th, you skip breakfast on 25th, and you skip breakfast on 26th. Because when we're talking about calories, it's not important what you ate on one particular day. We don't look at calories and we look at one meal. We look at the entire week. How much did you eat during the entire week? Not just what did you eat on one day. Did that make sense? Perfect. And when you do skip your breakfast, just make sure that you are constantly filling up with water. Constantly, constantly, constantly filling up your system with water. It's extremely important. It's gonna suppress hunger. It's gonna make you feel more fresh and healthier up here. You will get less injured if you're a dancer and just tons of different health benefits. This is the most important nutrition that we have, all right? That was tip number two. Then if you're already, tip number three, if you're already doing intermittent fasting, just keep fasting longer. Keep your fasting longer, do your HIIT training, do your workouts faster, keep it staying in a fasted state, keep them longer and keep your eating window, all right? Stick to your eating window. Don't go, you know, don't go all crazy just because it's during the entire holidays. You can do it one time, might, maybe two times. But what we're talking about is for you to not lose all the progression that you got leading up to here between the 24th or the 20th, maybe even, all the way to 30, 31, 30, um, 1st, 2nd, 3rd of January. That made sense, right? Perfect, guys, I need some thumbs up because sometimes I, if, if like, you know, you need to know that I see all of you. I think that most of you guys only have me. I see all of you. So if you guys are, if nobody's giving me a thumbs up, I, I, start, I, start, to, I start to hesitate on myself. <laughs> so that's the, that's the, that was that one. And this is a pro tip. This is a pro, pro tip because 
most of us have a little, and, it, and, it, and it's culture, right? Like, uh, it's culture, and most people won't understand the journey you are on. Most people won't understand the journey on. Like, we have a friend who stopped, we have a friend here where I live right now, and he stopped drinking alcohol. Like, completely. He became so, like, how do you say? He turned sober. And um, he told us, he's like, and I told him, he's like, how is the experience? Like, how is that for you? And he said, bro, it's better. And he said, bro, it's better that I take a non-alcoholic beer when I'm out with my friends. Because if I start to order juice, or if I don't, if I just say, no, I don't want any beer, they look at me like I'm a freak. And I told him, like, wow, that is so fascinating because when it comes to healthy food, in the beginning of your journey, you will experience the same thing. When you're in the beginning of your journey, it will be the same thing. So if you, are, if you, if you have been constantly saying yes to sweets at your grandma's plate, like drinks with your family and friends, being that person, the day you start to say, no, no, thank you, I'm good, I don't want to. Most people won't be able to understand it. And that's completely fine. That's completely fine. I just want you to know that it might come up. And a pro tip is that when you're going to a place, just be the one who brings a healthy dessert. Bring a healthy dessert. If you're going to your colleagues and it's like, or to your friends and you have a get together, Make sure to bring a healthy dessert. Because you can do carrot cake that tastes amazing, that everybody loves, that is really healthy. My girlfriend is doing blueberry muffins that taste like they are coming from straight out of heaven. You know what I mean? But they taste, and they are, they are healthy. Like they are, she makes them with protein powder, or vanilla protein powder. So it, they are good for me. <laughs> so I'm here constantly eating, like, <laughs> constantly, eating, uh, constantly eating muffins, but they taste amazing. So be that person and bring it. You don't need to tell anybody, everybody, it's, uh, it's super healthy. But like that, you don't put yourself in a position where you will be, I don't want to say look that, but I th you, make, you get my point, right? That made sense. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. That's a pro tip. That's a pro tip. For me, that made, when I started doing that, game changer. Now, let's say you're going out with your friends, there's a lot of people drinking. Um, I'm not anti-alcohol, I'm not. I think it serves its place in moderation. However, I'm very aware that it's a drug. Uh, and I believe that if you deny that, you need to look into <laughs> what alcohol actually do to your body. But I believe the even worse drug, I believe that an even worse drug than alcohol is sugar. So when you're out drinking with your friends, for example, or when you're getting invited to your spouse, family, and you're, everybody's drinking, skip the soda. Just skip the soda. Don't take a mojito, take just rum. Don't do Cuba Libre, just do Cuba. You know, just skip the Coca-Cola. Pick your poison, that's what I'm trying to say. Pick your poison here. Don't go all the sugary drinks, all the sweets, and an alcohol on top of that. It's just, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're out with me, I'm drinking or a rum or whiskey, straight. You don't get a hangover, you don't have a headache the day after, and I don't get sugar. <laughs> like, I don't get all the negative things that sugar has to come with, right? Oh, yeah. And it tastes better all size, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you, if you have a good whiskey, you start, you start to, you know, you start to drink whiskey. It's like, why am, why am I gonna add Coca-Cola to this one? What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm gonna buy 30, 40 dollars for this bottle. Then I'm gonna take one, one dollar of Coca-Cola and put it inside of this. Come on. <laughs> um, and then we have the situation of maybe you're hosting. Maybe you're hosting. I know some of us watching are are the elders in their family. You have younger generations uh, under you. And you eat together with your family. It's a beautiful experience, everybody's there. You have your, you, you brought the healthy, the, healthy, the healthy sweets. You made all the food. You have some rice over, you have some chicken over, maybe some turkey, I don't know what you eat in your, in your country. Some ham, maybe. 
and then everybody leaves and your cousin left cake, your great grandmother left cake, your aunt left her cake. So you have all the leftovers left. Or if you're anything like me, you come to my home. Or if I go to my, my, my uncle's place, if I go to my uncle's place, so we Africans, right? We're from Cape Verde. If I don't bring food with me from my uncle's place, it's like an insult. <laughs> If I don't take leftovers with me home from my uncle's place, it's like an insult. <laughs> but I love to do it because he cooks amazing. But with that being said, you put yourself in a position one more time where you now all of a sudden you have all these leftovers back home. But I'm going to give you a pro tip, champ. It's a small secret. Where I'm from, we have something that we call the freezer. <laughs> and in the freezer, it has this amazing thing that it turns your food to ice. <laughs> so you don't need to eat it straight away. <laughs> so you can actually eat it <laughs> for months. <laughs> so you don't need to feel like, oh shit, I have all this food at home, so I need to just shove my face filled with it. Now, if you're anything like me, I can't have that in my home. So if I have, if I have like candy, where I live, I need to, somebody needs to eat it straight away. Like if I bring, I can't, I can't buy two Snickers and bring them into my home. Like I just, I just don't have that discipline. So I just set myself up for success in that case. So I just don't do it. Right? Now, if you, if you have that discipline, put them in the fridge or freezer. But that's just me. Don't feel, and what I'm trying to say, like I'm joking with it, but don't feel, I don't want you to feel that mental pressure of, wow, I need to eat it. I need to eat it now because I don't want to throw away food. Like, I hate throwing away food. Like, I just don't do that. Like, do nothing almost. But you use the freezer to your advantage. It's a silly tip, I know it, but trust me, if you start to use the freezer more, it's going to help you. All right? Thumbs up if everything is making sense so far. Boom. Fantastic. Julia, is everything making sense for you? Boom, good. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> um, there we go. Also, when you're at the Christmas table, focus on your proteins. Focus on your proteins. This is a pro tip again. When you're at your grandma's place, I, I, I keep saying grandma's place because I always celebrate Christmas at my grandma's place, but you get what I'm saying. So when you're at your grandma's place and you have all this food laid out, you have like, all the things, just imagine, visualize the Christmas table. Everything that is in your Christmas table. You don't need to eat everything. You don't need to eat everything from everything. Just focus on the protein because your goal, if you're here, is probably to or build muscles or lose fat or do both. And, or maybe at the same time, of course, all the mental discipline parts also, but I'm talking strictly physically. So focus on the protein and just double down on that. Eat more of the protein. Just add tons of vegetables and protein. Just chill a little bit on the carbs. And then invest them later in the dessert. Because it's a, it's a game. It's a numbers game. Is, the, is it making sense when I say like it's a numbers game with calories? Because for me it makes total sense. So it's all just calories in, calories out. And then it's just like, hmm... What do I got here? What do I got here? Here's the Christmas table. I got some meatballs over there. I got some ham there. I got some rice and potatoes there. I mean, rice and potatoes is basically rice and potatoes if it's Christmas or if it's not Christmas. Let me skip that and just focus on that. Let me see. Julia is saying the, the, food I'm, uh, the food I usually have for Christmas is very high in fat. Perfect. So then you skip all the calories. Oh, skip, the, skip the carbohydrates. Skip all the carbohydrates, focus on more fat and, and um, was it the third one? Protein. And then the day after, you go right back to fasting. Right back to fasting. Right back to where you started. Um, next thing is to set the timer for when your uh, eating window ends. Set the timer for when your eating window ends. And that is a tip that I used for the longest time when traveling. So in 2018 was the year I traveled the most with dancing and, and dance-specific training. Uh, I traveled way too much, way, way too much. 
I did 38 travels in, no, I did 42, sorry, 42 travels in one year. I didn't enjoy it, Van Bounce, which is way too much traveling. It was, I'm very grateful that I did it, but it was just way too, uh, way too much, way, way too much. And what that made me do is that I really understood that, okay, I'm doing all of this social dancing. I'm doing all of this social dancing, all of this partying, constantly eating out late, and I have all this access because I'm an artist, no? So I'm, I had constantly access to like free alcohol, free food, la la la. But at that time, I said to myself, okay, I need to put a stop here. Like I need to live within some type of boundaries because if not, it's going to start to affect my health. Not just visually, but also how I'm actually feeling internally. So what I did was that I set a timer. So at 10 o'clock, I stop eating. So like this, you take away the binge eating. You, you only take away the binge eating. It's like, why are you gonna have a hot chocolate coffee, hot chocolate with whipped cream and all of those calories? 10, 15. Why? You don't really need it, do you? Because you ate earlier. Did that make sense? So then the next thing also comes up is like, don't binge eat. Don't binge eat. For you guys who don't live in, in, in the States, binge eating is like when you're small eating, we say in Swedish. It's like, because it's so much food that it's so accessible to you, you know what I mean? You walk around, you go into the living room, oh shit, here's some crackers, like, mm, they are fantastic. Go back to the kitchen, you have some meatballs, oh my days, what is happening? Go up to, to somebody, to, to the other place, to the living room, and whoa, here's even more food. So you're constantly eating, constantly eating sweets, constantly eating sweets. So it's like, when you're eating sweets, now I'm eating sweets. Now I'm having dinner. Now I'm having dessert. Don't just all the time, constantly, constantly, constantly. Because it becomes an addiction, right? You get that sugar high. So it's literally an addiction. So you get that peak of the dopamine and serotonin, everything that just tastes fantastic, zoop, everything goes straight up. And you had a little dip, and then you just fill yourself up again. And then you have a little dip, and then you fill yourself up again. So when you eat, you eat. When you don't eat, you don't eat. If you combine that, if you combine no bin sheeting with like setting a timer, like knowing your eating windows, skipping the soda, bringing the healthy desserts, and all of the tips we just get ran over, you're going to set yourself up for success. All right? And then the day after, you get right back on track like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. There is no, okay, cool, I have all this cake again, all the leftovers. Let me just eat cake for breakfast and then I'm just gonna skip training anyway, Psst, whatever. Like, I can't eat, I can't train now when I had cake for breakfast, can I? I mean, that would be so counterintuitive, wouldn't it? Like, why, why are you hiding, Julia? I, I, listen, listen, I, I, I'm the same, I'm the same, so I'm, I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to me also, all right? Don't ever think that I'm not in the same boat as you guys, all right? But that's the thing, just have it, just go straight back on track, because if you're not, the, the downward momentum is going to keep going, and the truth is that the downward momentum goes so much faster than the upward momentum. The downward momentum is like, you know, it's a it's a, it's a fucking, what do you call it, slip and slide. With water and, and the soap and everything, it just goes top speed. But so it goes so fast for you to get off track. Now, if you're going up, you know, my, you know just as well as I do. It, it's like, you know, it, it's like, it takes time, it's like, it's not easy to get, to get to the top. It's not easy to make forward progression or upward progression, but down, that, that, goes, that goes fast. That made sense, right? Like the day after, you straight back. If you can, do your HIIT training the day before. I'll probably go to the gym if it's open on, if it's open on, on, uh, on, uh, on Christmas. Will I train? 100%. 100%. Why? Why not? Why not? Who said you can't train on Christmas? Who gives? You're home. Do what you do. Stick to your routines. Why wouldn't you? You enjoy it, don't you? You enjoy being healthy. You enjoy meditating. 
you enjoy eating healthy. Why wouldn't you do that on Christmas? You know what I mean? Like, why, why wouldn't you do the things that you like to do on Christmas? It makes no sense for me. But I get it because we have different cultures and then we have external factors. We all have different cultures inside of our families. But nobody knows what you are doing in your room when you wake up. Do five minute hit training and then boom, here we go. And then comes the most, so that's all, the, that's the first nine tips. We have do your hit training the day before, skip breakfast, fast longer if you're already doing intermittent fasting, bring a healthy dessert, skip the soda if you're drinking alcohol, uh, just go straight, pure, just go pure alcohol. It's a strange tip, I know, I know. It's a strange tip when I, when I say it out loud, but it made sense when I explained it. <laughs> don't eat the leftovers. Don't eat, don't stress about eating leftovers. Use the freezer. Focus on proteins and uh, proteins, proteins and vegetables on the Christmas table. You know nutrition, you understand it by now. Most of you have already read my ebook. If you don't understand what am I talking about, I'm so lost when it comes to nutrition. Or you send me a DM and I will explain it to you. Or you go on Coach Sebastian on YouTube, that's my YouTube page. And we have tons of different videos explaining this. So you have the information available. And by the way, you should all, you should all subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right? If you don't. If you don't. Uh, set the timer for when the eating ends. Minimize your binge eating. Get back on track the day after. And then the most important tip of them all is to enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. It's Christmas. You're with your family. Chill out. You can do all the things I said, or you can choose to not do a word of what I said. And then the day after, you just go straight back on track. Enjoy. It's the holidays. I don't care what you're doing on one day. I care about what you're doing all the other days. One day is not going to get you off track. It will if, you're, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't pay attention. But if you keep coming here, you have all the tools to get back on track. But don't stress over the holidays, all right? Chill out. Enjoy, spend time with your family, recharge, bring them some healthy foods, but don't overdo it. Unless, unless you want to. Because if you want to fucking go ahead, you know what I mean? Go crazy. <laughs> I know what I like to do. So I'm just going to keep doing exactly what I like to do. And I want you to do the same. But what I don't want you to do is to go to Christmas and be all stressed. Don't do that. Because that's your happiness level. Remember what we started with? We started with talking about the good life. So if your happiness level goes low because of you want to push your health level so much, your health pillar, health, wealth, love, and happiness, if you push your health pillar up and your happiness level goes down, you're messing it up. You're not doing it right. <laughs> we need to calibrate. Any questions? Any questions on this? Any questions about nutrition, training, mindset, feel free to shoot right now. I see that you guys are my students, you know what I mean? Because uh, everything I say, you guys don't have questions, which means I'm doing a fantastic job. That's why I know you guys are my students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean, that's what I mean. Any, I dare you to say a question now after, after I said that, you know what I mean? It's basically saying I'm a shitty trainer. It's basically saying I'm a shitty coach if you ask a question right now. We don't. <laughs> I'm joking with you. <laughs> Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Tell me, Julia. Um, I wanted to ask if you have any tips on curing sugar addiction. Yeah, ooh, that's a great question. That's a great, great question. So I believe, there, I believe there's two ways of answering that. There's one that is like, it's progression, right? It's progression like anything. I don't think, like I used to smoke cigarettes earlier. Most of you guys don't know that, but I used to smoke cigarettes. And I couldn't just like stop it. For me, it was, it's a progression. 
or that's at least how most people do it. So you go step by step. So if, I, if you used to smoke a package a day, then you smoke a package minus one cigarette. And you do that for a week or two. And then you, you do a week or, and then a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. So it's just reverse progression, I guess you can call it. Same thing as when you're training, right? When you started training, we didn't put you on five days a week, did we? You know what I mean? We don't put a, a person who is not used to train, okay, you're gonna train five days a week because your body is not ready for it, your mind is not ready for it, your lifestyle is not ready for it, so it needs to be progressive. So we start with maybe two, three, and we do that for a couple of weeks, and then we do four, five for a couple of weeks, and then step by step. And then you're gonna fall down, you're gonna miss some days, so then we're back to three times per week. And then we go back to five, because now everything is good. And then we go back to six. But just like everything in life, and that's the thing when it comes to like curing sugar addiction, you know? So, or curing any addiction, that we want to end it now. Like, give me the quick fix. I, I have, I've been in this, I've been depressed all my life, or I have this addiction for so many years and I want it to end now. Yeah, but it doesn't work like that, unfortunately, unless there is like a really drastic change or a drastic event that gives you like a, wow, a paradigm shift straight away. But usually what it is is that, so you're here now, then you do three days, you, let's say, you eat four cans of Coca-Cola, yeah? that's like your standard, and then we take it down a little bit, so now you eat three cans, and then you go, you're gonna go down to four again, and then you're gonna go back up to two, and then one day you feel like you're going crazy, so you're gonna have like five cans of Coca-Cola, and then, but what we're doing is that we're constantly moving forward, we're constantly going from here, so this is the, this is the cans, or this is the amount of sugar, and this is time, right? So we're constantly becoming better, constantly becoming better throughout time. Because it goes back to what I said, don't just look at one day, look at the entire broader spectrum. That's one way of doing it. I like to, when I get stuck in a bad, in, a, in, an, unhealthy, in an unhealthy habit, I just like to, and I'm not sure this is for anyone, or I'm sure this is not for everyone, but I like to increase the knowledge of how fucking bad this is for me. Because if that was like the main thing for me, at least, because I'm asthmatic. So when I was smoking cigarettes, like I, I really understood after a while, it's like, what am I doing? Like, I love life. I'm fucking, I'm killing myself. Every puff of this I'm taking, I'm dying faster. And it just takes me so far away from my movie ending. So I increased the fear from knowledge. And I also believe that for an, now there's a lot of, it's a lot of good, there's a lot of quest, uh, tips here. But I believe you change, I believe you gotta change one addiction to another. I believe you gotta change one addiction to another. I changed my depressive and anxious state, mindset, with training. I was depressed for many years, I had panic anxiety for many years. And for me, what I changed it with was training. And for you, maybe you need to, whenever you are feeling that craving of sugar, you need to add something else to it, a glass of water. Read a book, something that puts you away from that thought and just thought control in general. I hope those tips were, I hope some, one of them were like, one that worked. Can I add something to that real quick? Shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, another advice, you know, coming from somebody that had to get rid of a bad habit. Never, ever, 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 ever <sighs> go cold turkey. <laughs> All at once. Like, because you know that I, was, I had a bad caffeine addiction. And as someone that has anxiety, you're kind of being counterproductive to yourself. So... I didn't realize how bad it was until I decided to just get rid of the cold turkey. And I was getting headaches, 
I was sweating more. <laughs> Death palpitations. Like I honestly swear to God, I thought I had COVID. Like I thought it was like I thought it was really like like sick or something. And then I realized, oh no no no, this is caffeine withdrawal. And I had to go through this for like about like a month or a month and a half. Like so, if I would have gone what you were saying, and just go little by little by little by little by little, I probably wouldn't have to endure such you know withdrawals you know for that long. So moral of the story, everybody. Just, if you're gonna give up a bad habit or an addiction, whatever the case may be, go step by step. Don't you don't have to go cold turkey like I did. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I remember you. I remember all the th- all the things you went through <laughs> from. All the things you felt, it sucks, it sucks, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, yeah, then again, it, but it, it's different for everyone, you know? Like, it's different for everyone. For some people, or like, some, some people really need to just go cold turkey, and some people don't, like, you gotta know yourself, you know? But it's a great one, it's a great tip that you're saying. How do you feel about light products and artificial sugar to replace sugary products? I feel it's like replacing cancer with AIDS. That's how I feel about it. I think it's both the devil with that being said like uh again i'm very i'm very harsh on that because i believe and that and, that, and that's a hard statement that i just did because i hear uh, because it's marketing because it's marketing they are light products is not better light products is not better at all sugar like diet soda is not better it has tons of sweeteners inside of it and tons of artificial products so it, it's, it both is terrible. One le- little less terrible doesn't make it better. But then again, if you are the person that, that needs to do progression, start with that. Start with that. But know that sooner or later you need to give that up also. You know? Don't believe for a, for a second that that's going to make you healthy. Did that make sense? So it's like, if you were drinking Coke before, I go to Coke Light for a while. And then after that, you go to Coke Zero for a while. But ultimately, you are going to stop drinking Coke. Like, Coke Zero is not your end destination. Artificial sugar is not your end destination. Your end destination is no sugar, if, if that's your end destination. You know what I mean? Um, I went, I went cold, Susie's saying, I went cold turkey. Yes, it was hard, but for me, it had to be done. You know, some, it's different for everyone. It's different for everyone. Uh, is it okay to work out on an empty stomach? I'm doing intermittent fasting, but it's hard to work out at night, at night after work. But it doesn't feel right to work out on an empty stomach in the morning. Any advice? You can absolutely work out on an empty stomach. I'm always working out on an empty stomach, actually. Uh, and I've been doing it for years. And you beat, I beat personal records on, on an empty stomach. Um, it, it takes a little time for your body to get used to it. And it also depends on what type of training you are doing. When you don't have food inside of your system, especially carbohydrates, which is your, which is the body's main source of fuel, your body is 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 is, um, how do I say? Your body has to eat has to. How do I say that in English? So if you not eat if. (laughs) If you don't have carbohydrates in your body, your body needs to convert, uh, this I say, your body needs to convert fat into what is called ketones. So if you skip the breakfast, your body will, doesn't need to use all the carbohydrates that you got in your body until it can start to use fat as a source of fuel. So if you skip that thing, you have only fat. Will it make you feel dizzy? Maybe, if you're not used to it. Will it feel strange? It can be. Any tips? Have a coffee. Coffee works perfect for me. Have something light. If you don't want, if you don't want to go strictly like, you know, no breakfast. If that's not you, have something light. Have you know, something maybe some eggs that is high in protein and high in fats. I maybe have like a banana, something that's easy, easily digested. That's my tip to you. I'm doing strictly coffee and BCAAs when I'm training. Thank you, coach. You're welcome, champ lady. Hi, right, Familia, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for hanging around. I'm very glad to see all of you, all of you guys who are new. Welcome to the family. We're happy to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
and uh, there is no